Okay, so I have a bit of a complex relationship with Zack Snyder. Some of his stuff I absolutely despise. I mean, I've I mean my first movie I saw from him was was his Dawn of the Dead remake, which may have been his first big movie. I'm not sure, but um, and I thought that was one of the most unnecessary remakes of all time. Of course, we've had so many unnecessary remakes since then, but the bar has been lowered to the point where I rewatched it recently, and I was like, this isn't as bad as I remember. <laughs> but that has more to do with Hollywood lowering the bar of what I expect out of them than anything he did to actually make it good. I also utterly despise particularly the theatrical cut of Batman vs. Superman. The, on, the only good thing in that theatrical cut was Gail Gadot as Wonder Woman and me. And, and the, yeah, Henry Cavill as Superman and Ben Affleck as Batman. They were, they were all pulling their hardest against a really bad script. And I will say that there's a... Uh, I will say that... The, his extended cut did show why that should have been the cut released in theaters. However, it still wasn't good in my book. It was coherent, at least. I could at least follow the plot at that point and understand why things were happening. But it still wasn't a movie that I liked at all. 300, I'm sort of... um. It sort of has a middle ground for me. On the one hand, I do like some of the visuals, and as an epic fantasy film, it's I I I find it a, I find it kind of enjoyable. However, however, I would have liked to have seen. I would still like to see a way more or historically accurate, you know telling of those events so that bugged me at the time and it still kind of does but um but then it, but on the other so that's sort of in the middle and then on the other end of the spectrum i really really liked his cut of justice league i thought that was finally giving dc an identity that i hadn't hadn't um seen seen before i that i it was finally giving dc an identity that made it feel not like a knockoff of what marvel was doing it felt like it it finally felt like its own thing and i'm like well why weren't they doing this from the beginning and yeah um man of steel is another one that i actually liked seeing in theaters yes there were a few things that i didn't that I absolutely didn't like but I felt like I felt like but I felt like executives at Warner Brothers pulled you know went too hard in the other direction of trying of trying to course correct that movie I feel like if they had just course corrected a few minor things in that movie they would have had a successful franchise it got it got a franchise off to a good it got the franchise off to a decent start, considering that Superman had pretty much been a dead franchise for the better part of 20 years when it came out. But that, but it wasn't. But it didn't make all the money in the world. So I, so they, so there was a panic button hit at at Warner Brothers, I guess, and uh, it just. But I didn't think that was terrible. In fact, uh, in fact, it released on my birthday. I went to go see it, and be honest, that will, that's probably my favorite birthday memory because, because uh, here's the thing: going in the first showing on your birthday to see what you've been hoping to see all your life, which is, uh, you know, Superman having a a huge epic battle, and. Directed by a director whose stuff, to me anyway, I know this is a controversial statement, but to me anyway, always looks good, is great, is, uh, was just a lot of fun. Then there's uh, Watchmen, which I think is the best adaption we're probably, uh, we could probably hope to get of that. He, he didn't, he just, um, it, 
yeah, yeah, some things were condensed for time. Yeah, I didn't really like like the change he made to the ending, although I get why he made it. I get it. He 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 didn't fi he thought that if it was just I think he was under the I think his thought process was that the ending of the comic where just New York was attacked would lead eventually to the US eventually blaming Russia and suspecting Russia, so it wouldn't actually solve the problem they were trying to solve. Now, my reading of Watchmen was that the plan was due, was that the book was ending on the note that the plan was doomed to fail, and that's why Rorschach's journal got out, and that's why we were reading Watchmen right now, because the truth had come out through Rorschach's journal being published, and the movie kept that, so I don't see that, that, but I get, I get it after after you know a nearly four hour epic he wanted that wasn't that wasn't meant to have sequels he wanted he wanted some sense of hope so i get that i get i get i get why why he did that i didn't like i didn't like that but overall i really really think watchmen is actually a good adaption of a comic book that was nearly impossible to adapt so all that being said I went in with some trepidation, especially after some of the reviews I heard for Rebel Moon. And now, I know I'm going to get some flack for this. Because it was one of those Zack Snyder movies that I really enjoyed. And I've watched it twice. I watched it once on my own, taking notes. And I watched it, you know... And I watched it, and then I... You know, and then I watched it with other people, and, and, yeah, I enjoy it. Um, I just, and I, I thought I was going to hate it. I thought, I thought it was going to be more of everything that I didn't like, but, but, uh, but, I have to say, I think, I think the critics are wrong on this, and I think it's going to end up being a thing like with Watchmen. Watchmen, when it first came out, I remember everyone in nerd culture absolutely hated that movie. Now that we're removed from it, People are re I've seen a lot of reviewers reevaluate it and are coming back and they're saying and I'm seeing a lot of much kinder reviews to Watchmen, like and it's from people who absolutely hated it when it was in theaters. And I have to wonder if this is gonna be another one of those things. And I and I absolutely do not like the whole advertising the movie as um oh well you'll get the complete version later, where they're obviously trying to trying to cash in on the Snyder Cut, their, uh, you know, whole Snyder Cut deal from, of Justice League. Never mind that people wanted to see the Snyder Cut because, because, be, the Snyder Cut was organic. The S Snyder Cut was people like me openly wondering, wait a second, they said shooting was complete and that they had finished, and that, and that they were finishing up special effects and editing, but then he was kicked off the film and they said it was because his daughter, because of what happened with his daughter, which is really sad. It's one of the saddest things to happen in modern, you know, super... In the modern superhero sphere, I can't think of anything sadder that's happened in recent years. But, um... The, but that was organic. Snyder Cut... The Snyder Cut was organic. It was us wondering what the movie would have been if he hadn't left the movie and if... And if most of the movie, and if, you know, just like 52%, I think, of a movie hadn't been reshot, and if the movie hadn't been edited down to half the runtime that it was originally intended. The movie was reshot by another director who has a vastly different style, and it was edited down, and so that made an incoherent mess. So, I absolutely don't like what Netflix is doing here, where they're like, oh, just wait for the extended cut. But here's the thing. I watched this movie. I don't think it needs an extended cut. 
I mean, I'll watch the extended cut and and give my thoughts on that. But overall, I felt like I like I I ended up like I ended up liking the characters. I ended up following the story and the setting and um. And I don't like reviewing my movies, you know, deflecting criticism. I'll, I just, I, I'm just going to tell, I, I just like talking about what I like about the movie. And, you know, if people want to dislike it, they can dislike it. But there, but there is one particular piece of criticism that I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to talk to simply because I think it shows something interesting that's going on. And I really didn't expect a company like Netflix to, uh, Put this view out there, and I don't, I don't know how if this slipped by there. You know, people who are supposed to be overseeing this stuff and making sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen. But here's the thing: culturally, Hollywood, and Hollywood comic books, whatever, it's all been for the past decade, been telling us that women should not be feminine, that if that women should be should be ma should be masculine if a woman acts feminine that's wrong if a woman acts masculine that's right and that's empowering and that's 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 what hollywood that's what they've been doing all right and i've seen a lot of people jump on this movie because it has a masculine female protagonist she she is somewhat she she ha she has very masculine qualities and they're act and they're saying, "Yep, this is another example of the of the quote unquote woke mind virus." This is a you know, this is another example of Hollywood pushing that agenda. Except, I saw something different, and the people I watch and and the person I watched this movie with when I when I watched it ha ha had the same reaction, unprompted, as me, which is they didn't get it because this movie absolutely treats her her being forced into a masculine role and her being forced to be masculine as a crime that was put um that was committed against her she was kidnapped as a child brainwashed put into a world where if she didn't become masculine she died and she even said she has this exact line of dialogue in the movie she says the desire for love in a family was beaten out of me to me this does not ex this does not sound like an endorsement of making women masculine it sounds like it sounds like the exact opposite actually it sounds like it's sounds like they're actually saying no this is wrong our society is treating women this way and it's wrong we women, women have we're going to have qualities of their own that should be respected, not beaten out of them to make them fit in just so... Because because here's the thing. Here's what it ultimately comes down to, I think. The world is becoming more and more just bureaucratic. Corporations are bureaucratic. Governments are bureaucratic. And bureaucrats like one-size-fits-all solutions to everything. Why do you think what happened in 2020 happened with vaccines and stuff. Why, why, why do you think that they pushed the solution for what happened in 2020 where they didn't listen to, where they didn't want you to come to them and tell them, well, my doctor says that your solution isn't safe for me because it's too hard for them to have multiple solutions for multiple people. It's e bureaucrats want to have want to just treat everybody exactly the same so if they make women masculine well that solves everything we don't have to worry about and eventually because the women are being made masculine kids aren't being born so they don't have to worry about kids they just have to worry about they just have to worry about adults kids act differently than adults and kids need different solutions to problems than adults you know, both emotionally and physically because of the way their bodies are developing. But they don't have to worry about that if women go masculine. And that's and that's why I think and that's why I think in the end women are being pushed to become more masculine is because then there won't be reproduction. So therefore, again, everyone can be treated the same 
the corporations can treat your boss can treat you the same can treat everyone the same regardless the government can treat you the same regardless it'll it'll it's just so much easier for the people who have to do the paperwork and that's what and that's what's happening here but i but that was the one piece of criticism and look what happens um well if you see this movie um i'm trying to avoid too many spoilers because i really did enjoy this movie it's an enjoyable to me this isn't a star wars clone it and star wars have a bunch of the same inspirations but this but the criticism that this is a star wars clone again doesn't make much sense to me it's 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 more it it's more of that they both that they that they both see that they both have have take took things from dune and foundation and a bunch of other literary science fiction i honestly star wars is my the original star wars is my favorite film trilogy of all time however i will say this I think it gets more credit than it deserves for originality, and I think that's because the majority of filmgoers are ignorant of literary science fiction. And so they don't see what Star Wars took from... They don't see that Star Wars didn't invent a genre. So it's it's like in the, um, it's like in the 90, 90s when it really wasn't until Half-Life that people stopped calling everything every first it wasn't until like that people stopped calling every first person shooter a doom clone even though even though first person games and even first person shooting games had existed pre-doom um but doom had such a cultural impact that everything was seen as a doom clone i think the same thing has happened with the science fiction fantasy sort of rise and fall of empire genre of science fiction at least when it comes to filmmaking because eh, because people it just and we still haven't left that period we still haven't had a critical mass come out where something came out that is just as that is just as popular as the thing that originated it that's what happened is half-life came out and it was just as popular as the thing that originated its genre that was seen as originating its genre however it was obviously a huge step forward and no rebel moon isn't that but i don't think it has to be not every movie has to be the most groundbreaking thing ever um it it, it is it is to some extent the seven samurai in space but i found it an enjoyable seven samurai in space i actually liked our lead care i actually liked our lead character cora and one of the things that i liked is that she had a relatable she had a relatable arc she she's had all this stuff done to her and then she retreats to this place to try and get away from the politics and the systems and the bureaucracy that that even you that that even uses that even uses sex as a means of control and to me and to make you fight harder for them and what what here here's my here here's what i saw when when i was watching this movie what does she do when she gets free of them she ditches the masculine haircut now now her body's been shaped a certain way because of because of how she was raised and the manual labor it takes to farm on a planet that's been cut off from an empire it you know also reinforces that but she's but she's growing out her hair she's wearing dresses she she she's trying to regain what was taken from her which i find to be a very compelling story and it's definitely more compelling than anything we've gotten in the star wars movie you know since disney bought them and it's and and to me that was the heart of this movie and that's what i related to was this person who had been victimized by this bureaucratic state this evil you know bureaucratic state who even when she did things their way she she had failed at it and and she struggled and she was and she's struggling to somehow undo a lifetime of damage that's been done to her and then she ends up and then 
but she can't outrun her past and she has to face it and one of the things that i that i that i do and here's the thing this this is an entertaining action and the the two hours 15 minutes that this movie ran did a good job of showing that and to me since that was the heart of a movie that's why i don't think this needs a director's cut because i thought it did a good job showing that and Sofia Boutinelli, I think is her name. Um, I, I, I've never heard it pronounced, so I'm just reading it because off of IMDb because I uh, because I um don't because um I haven't seen her in anything else. But she does or uh, but she does a really good job. Some of the other actors aren't as strong as her per aren't as strong as aren't as strong as her, but um but but it's um but but she but she does but she does a but she does a good job in this and and i like the way Zack Snyder this is one of the best looking movies of the year and and i find it interest and the thing i find and 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 it does look better than a lot of movies that have much larger budgets. I was I was shocked to find that this when I looked it up on IMDb that this movie has a reported budget of only ninety million dollars. Since with the way Netflix tends to spend money, and with the way you know movies like this are being made these days, I I I, I thought this was a two hundred million dollar movie at least. Is it as impressive as what was done with Godzilla minus one? No 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 no. But you definitely see every dollar on screen. I like the action scenes were exciting. He, here's the thing is whatever he, he, here's the one thing I will give Zack Snyder, even though I strongly disagree with him on like I strongly disagree with him on politics and I don't always agree with his philosophy of filmmaking, but the one thing one piece of credit I will give him is that I can always see what's going on in his scenes, even in the action scenes, where when he gets all showy. A lot a lot of directors who try to pull off what Zack Snyder tries to pull off, I just... I don't... Uh, they, I can't... It, it gets confusing, and I have no idea what's going on in the action scene. When he does his slow down, you know, and speed up thing, it actually does enhance the impact of the action for me. I know your results may vary. Other people may will probably have different opinions on this, but but it actually does make things feel more impactful. It actually does help me. It actually does make it clear what's going on. And speaking of the action scenes, again, this is another area where it defies what has been going on in Hollywood. Yes, our hero win wins fights and she and she's a woman who's not you know the biggest woman ever and yeah i think maybe it would have made more sense for her to have more of a gino carraro type build but they do do a good job of showing that it's that it's because she uses her opponents underestimating her and she and she tends to fight dirtier than her opponents and 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 what's more, she's clearly pushed to her limit, like, in these fights. I mean, she's clearly gasping for breath. She's clear, and, and especially in the final fight, it's clear that if that fight had gone on longer, she would have lost it, but she, she just, she just barely pulled, by, again, by fighting dirt, by basically fighting dirty, she pulls out, and, and, to me, this was an enjoyable Seven Samurai in Space thing. I mean, I mean, there were other things that I liked. Like, for instance, I really like the, I really like the setup in this movie about the. Uh, it's, you see, in it, what it is is the, the whole royal family has been, has been, was murdered. So now you have this usurper who's trying to pull it together, but the. Uh, but the space empire has fractured, and and it shows what it would be like, and it does sh do a good job of showing what it would be like if something fractured and people were just allowed to, were just able to do what they want. And I do like that the random soldiers that are posted on this planet to to oppress the people they don't all ha they're not interchangeable. They're not faceless stormtroopers. They are they are people, and and. 
they're all evil, but there are various degrees of evil amongst them. And some of them, they're, they're still, they're still, they're still portrayed as human beings. And the thing I, and I really like, and as I said, I really liked the uh, villain for this movie, who's the villain who, who is part of most of the action. I mean, he, he's what he's what's been missing from a lot of movies, which is, I feel, which is a memorable villain. I mean, he had. I mean, it feels almost like Bond in that he has a gimmick. But I feel like in this type of in this sort of like pulp science fiction action adventure, your villain has to have a gimmick. It's like when they made the classic Bond films, they used to talk to the actors they cast as as the villains and his henchmen and ask them what they wanted their... The producers used to ask them, well, what do you think your villain's, you know, gimmick should be? Because they realized that that was part of establishing how a villain works. This guy does have a de decent uh, thing. He has this giant cane that he'll, that he'll just hit people with, and it's obvious with a weighted head that will just you know, totally destroy them. Yeah. But he but he he's the exact opposite of what we've been getting in movie villains for a long time, which is he's not a ranting I mean, he's mad, he's angry, he's obviously ruled by his passions, and that's shown as a bad thing, but it's in a quiet way, which again, I find quiet evil to be much more intimidating than the ranting raving like for instance we got in the recent Star Wars trilogy. I mean, he's a guy who will just very calmly order his spaceship to completely nuke a planet, and he will just calmly walk in his ship, and he'll just watch it being nuked with, like, while calmly talking about his strategy for the next step. And he has a cool costume and, and everything, and it, and it just, and that just works. And he makes a, he makes a really good protagonist because, he makes a really good um, antagonist to our protagonist because he represents somebody who's obviously embraced what this regime does to people, whereas she's fight, whereas she's fighting it. So they're like a dichotomy. You have you. I mean, it's obvious from the backstory that they both come from s very similar backgrounds. They went to the same academies. They probably fought in some of the same battles, and it's. And they, and they obviously, you know, existed in the same circles, but he embraced what was done to him, and, uh, and Cora, she, she got away from it. She went to a backwater planet and hoped that she could just get away with it, get away from it and mate, but she couldn't, because evil will not leave you alone. And that seems to be, that seems, and to me... That, along with the message that, you know, people, that we shouldn't be pushing, you know, these women to be something that they're not, that seems to be the overall message, is that evil won't leave you alone. People argue in this movie for, oh, let, let's just give them what they want and leave, but, but she points out that won't happen because they are evil. The evil absolutely does exist in this movie. And yes, there are a few things that are weird in this movie, but but um but they're pretty much all on the villain side. Like it's all like like there's this like there's this gay alien who who goes after our hero's best friend who's kind of a love interest, but again, she says that she doesn't understand romance because it was beaten out of her, and the only romance she knew was was a was a program when she was in the military designed to make her more loyal to the regime so again the fact that she that she, that she's not getting that there that there isn't a traditional love story in this it's not because it's not because the, it doesn't seem to be the writers or the director saying that those things are bad it seems to be saying well those were used as tools of control by the regime so now she doesn't know how to she doesn't know how to feel about that. You know, she doesn't know how to divorce. She'd love, like to, but she doesn't. And the other thing I, I would point, the other thing I would point out more, I would point out also is that in the end, something that I haven't seen in years, she actually gives them, she actually gives the male lead, when everybody's praising her, she gives the male lead 
the praise, the credit for actually saving them and actually saving their planet and and stuff. So, yeah, I I'm sorry if this was a more defensive like talk about a a movie, but this was a movie that had good action, good characters, and I and I just don't understand the backlash. I don't want to give too much away in case you haven't seen it, but I'm gonna say if if you if you like you know like the sci-fi empires rising and falling if the idea of watching the seven samurai in space if, if the idea of seeing you know a cool assassin lady take down a giant space fighter who again there's a maturity to this that isn't in the recent star wars movies like there's this spider monster woman who ha who has to be taken down at one point and she has a very sympathetic motivation however However, unlike most movies, it doesn't, her feelings, even though they may be justified and they're legitimate feelings, aren't a justifi don't justify her doing monstrous things. And that's a distinction that so few movies are making nowadays. They let you in on her sympathetic backstory, but then they say, well, if she won't pull back from doing evil things, it doesn't matter. And... Yeah, that that's a that that's a maturity in writing that you know we rarely see these days. So, yeah, this is definitely one of my top ten films of the year. I'll be doing a top ten list. I'm not. I haven't decided yet where exactly this falls. Is this a perfect movie? No. Is it? Is it a good Seven Samurai in space movie? And 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 does it look good? And does it have action? Does it have characters that? I found relatable and that yes I mean it's not the best thing ever made but it's definitely a seven point but I give it a 7.5 out of 10 it's it's a it's not and I think it works just to, I think it works works as a two hour fi 15 minute movie I'll be honest it it works that way for me so I'll be interested in director's cut but if a director's cut were never we're never to come. This would this I think will still be a movie that I'll come back to every couple of years to watch. So yeah, I I'm just gonna say this is one of the better Zack Snyder movies, if you ask me. And um, I really don't understand the backlash. I I I think it I I I think the trouble is is that film criticism now the the search engines the algorithms and everything. They reward you either saying that something is the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. They don't reward you for saying, well, this was somewhere in the middle. This was somewhere in the middle, and I found it to be an enjoyable middle, and I found it to be a middle that I liked spending two hours with. But that's where, to me, the majority of movies fall. And that's also, and I think that's where the majority of Zack Snyder's movies fall for me. He's one of those directors who I don't want, I don't, I don't watch all the time, but, but uh, I don't find, but I don't find most of his stuff, but I don't find a lot of his stuff terrible. And this is not the, the I don't. This is not the terrible movie it's been made out to be, in my opinion. I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to attack anybody who said that it was, and I know they'll, they'll, there are probably strong opinions, but I, the, there are strong opinions, and I, and I encourage you to voice them in the comments section. But um, I'm just gonna say. I like this movie. It's in my top ten for the year, and uh, it did help make up for the fact that I didn't get Dune Part Two this winter. And yeah, um, yeah, it is Seven Samurai in Space, and that's not an original idea, but it's a but it's a good version of Seven Samurai in Space. So, um. Yeah, have fun. Thanks for thanks for listening to my long rant, my long rambling rant of a review, and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.